Let's, let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, we come here in this place this morning because you indeed are God. And as we look into your word and as we celebrate what you have done for us this morning, we ask that you just fill this place and that you work in our hearts and in our minds, that you open our eyes and open our ears that we can truly see. God, we desire to know you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Can we all say, Amen. Okay, so yesterday I was at the volleyball game, and when I was at the volleyball game, uh, David was across the way. David was across the way, and when he was across the way, there was a group of people over here that were noticing that he was beginning to dance to this song, and so they were cheering him on, and they were, and so he stopped for a little while, and after a while he starts doing it. Now everybody's starting to notice they're starting to dance with him from across the way. I would show you what it was like, but it wouldn't look like what it was like. So here they are. They're dancing from across the way. And one thing I never heard them say is, is, hey, beloved. Hey, beloved, do it again. I never heard that. Not even one time. And then, and then I saw Josh when they were starting to play some music. Josh, are you here? So, man, I tell you what, if, if there's a fan that I want to have, I think it's going to be Josh. Josh is across the way, and now he's encouraging songs to play, particular songs to play, because he sings to the songs, and he also has movements to the song, but I don't know if I'm going to call it dancing, but he has some, uh, some physical motions going on with some of his songs. So he's, he's hollering across the way, and I never heard him say anything like, hey, beloved, play that song again. I never heard anything like that come from his, his mouth. And, and the, that's a word that we just don't hear very often, is this idea of beloved. But yet we have, as we look at the book of 1 John, we're, the one we've been calling Old Man John or Papa John, which, hey, homemade pizza? Okay, so, if you're thinking about this old man John who wrote this letter, this, this Papa John who wrote this letter to us, he is addressing people numerous times with, hey, beloved. Beloved is picture. He's like a grandpa writing a letter and reminding, like, hey, beloved, hey, dear friends. I want to write you something. And he writes to us because he says, I want you to share in my joy. And can I take a moment to ask you guys to put your cell phones away? If you have those out, please don't use them here. Tuck them away just for a little bit. So that way it's not a distraction and gets in the way. And John, in this letter, writes to the beloved. Now imagine that we spoke this way around here. You go to lunch, right, for the homemade pizza, and you're headed to your group. So you go over to your group over here, and you sit down, and you go, Hi, beloveds. How's your day? Think that would work? So, so tell me, beloveds, did you register for classes? I mean, really, it's, it's this enduring term. But what I want to do is look at this section where he uses this term again as he addresses these people whom he has shared the gospel with, the, the good news with. So you'll notice it up here. And if you have your Bible with you, grab it and open it to 1 John chapter 2. We will start in verse 7. Stick it on up there, Greg. 1 John 2, starting in verse 7. I want to read this small section to you right here. Dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment to you. Rather, it's an old one you've had from the very beginning. This old commandment, to love one another, the same, is the same that you've heard before. Yet, he says, yet, it is also new. Jesus lived out the truth of this commandment, and you are also living, for the darkness is disappearing, and the true light is already shining. And then he does a little bit of definition of this. He says, if anyone claims I am living in the light but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves another brother or sister is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is still living and walking in darkness, and such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. <coughs> You know what's really interesting about this? He starts off with this beloved, and then he's saying, hey, friends. In the NLT, which we have up here, he changes it. He says, dear friends, but know that this is a deep, like he has compassion for them. And they're, and they're a group that he's, he's been with and he's shared with numerous times. He says, beloved, I want you to know this. I want you to know this truth, and I want, I want you to, to understand this fully. He says, I'm giving you a new command, but hey, I want you to notice something. Can you go back? Yeah, I, I want you to go back one more. One more. Well, one more too, I guess. So he says right here, he says, I'm writing to you an old command. And see the part where it says to love one another and there's two lines around it? 
That is actually not even written in the original Greek. So that means, right here, the New Living Translation, they wanted to make sure that we knew what was being said, so he stuck it in there. So get this. He writes to them, hey, dearly beloved, hey, friends, I want to remind you of something, and this is a command that he then goes on. He doesn't even say what it is. I want to give you this command, but it's not a new one. It's one that you already know, and then he goes on. He expects them to know it so well that he doesn't even have to tell them what this command is, that to love God and to love others. He just expects them to know this. So when we say the gospel cares for the lost and for the hurting, you see it's a natural part of the gospel. John in this letter says, I don't even think I have to tell you what it is that you should love God and you should love others. And in the NLT, they're helping us out by, by putting that in there. But then notice what he goes on to say. He says, if anyone claims. Do we see that word claims up there? He's saying, now some of you are speaking one thing and you're doing something totally different. And if you claim it, that doesn't what makes it true. He says, you want to know how they, if you want to know how you're a Christian, you want to know how you're living this out, you want to know that it's true and it's authentic, you love God and you love others. And then he says it's impossible. It's impossible to love God and to hate your brother and sister in Christ at the same time. He's really strong and he's really bold with that. He, he just makes it as a fact. He, he, he makes it as a statement. So we must love others. And then he says, and part of that, you love your brothers and sisters in Christ. I really like how he continues on after this. Let's, let's read the next part after this, starting in verse 12. He says, I'm writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I'm writing to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I'm writing to you who are young in the faith because you have won your battle with the evil one. I'm writing to you who are God's children because you know the Father. And I've written to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. And I have written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts and you have won the battle with the evil one. There's a couple parts that really stick out to this. You notice the people he's addressing? He's not talking, I don't think, as much about physical age. I think he's talking about spiritual age. Some of us are children, and some of us are young, and some of us are mature in our faith. And do you see yourself somewhere in there? And he says to them, you know, I just said that you know that you believe when you love God and you love others. You really, that's really when you see this lived out, that the gospel cares for the lost and the hurting. And then he says, but if you have any doubt, it's not about what you do. It's about what Jesus has already done. Hey, your children, those that are young in the faith, it's okay. You're forgiven. And then notice what he says for the young. And I wonder if that's sometimes because of college age, if that's not a lot of us in this room. He says, those of you that are young, you have won the battle. It's because of his strength, his power. And then he says, to those of you that are mature, be strong. Those of you that are old, be strong. He uses a particular word numerous times in there. He uses the word know. You know that. He says, you know. And by the way, know, the Greek word gnosko, is not just to know with your brain. It's not that I... Because you know what? Satan believes in Jesus. He knows who Jesus is. But this word gnosko, it's deeper. It says, not only do I know the facts, not only have I heard the story about Jesus, but that it's something more personal. That I know and that I know right here in my heart as well. It's a passion and it's a personal thing. We might say, maybe that's oftentimes where we use the word relationship. So he says, you guys who know, you know this. And his bold, his bold statements there, he says, I know that you're forgiven. And I know that you're strong. And then picture this Papa John, right? He, he now gets to this section where he's just declared to them. And then he, he gives one last, almost like a grandfather might do, or someone who's walked there before you. He's, he, he pauses and he says, but I want you to watch out for something. I want you to watch out for this. Verse 15. Do not love the world or the things of it that it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. You picture it? He says, My beloved, I want you to know this. This is what it looks like to know God. 
This is the assurance that you have in God. And don't be led astray. Don't chase after those things of the world that it seems like that's what you want. Maybe right now it's, I just got to get a career with a really great paying job because that's what it's about. If I make a lot of money, then I'll have true joy and true happiness. Or if I just find the right spouse, then I'll be happy, right? Then I'll find that joy. And saying, wait a second, be careful that you don't seek the things of the world. But if we keep our eyes focused on Him, because those things of the world, they fade away. I know we've heard it before, right? But when you die, what do you take with you? You don't take anything of your possessions with you, do you? So I think back to what he said just before that. I'm writing to you who know God. Just know that you're forgiven. Know that you are strong. And know that you have won the battle. And today as we celebrate communion together, we're reminded that it's not because of what we have done, but it's because of what he has done. This is a reminder this morning that Papa John wants us to share in his joy. And as we take communion this morning, we get to share in that joy together as we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. I want to invite out Bishop Mackey to come up this morning. He's going to lead us in communion, but before he does, I want to interact a little bit with this section where he says, I declare to you that you're forgiven, that you're strong, that you're victorious, and you've overcome. He, he declares this to them. He's, he's telling them you're holy. He's telling them that they're set apart or, or maybe that they're saints. Right. And, but right now, there's three holy days together, is that right? This is correct. And, this is correct. and can you tell us a little bit about those holy days where saints is often used? To yeah. So I think all of you probably know the first one. It was on Monday. Um, most of you know it was Halloween. Uh, the old name is All Hallows Eve. So the church has this tradition of kind of starting the party the night before, as it were. We do this with Easter. We do this with Christmas. We do this with others. We typically call it vigil. Um, and so All Hallows Eve is the day before All Saints Day, which was yesterday, in which we recognize the 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 joy that it is to be a follower of Christ. Um, I think it was in verse 11 of the book. It says, God's children. You know, John's talking to all God's children. And if you are one who is following after Christ, if you've received Christ, then congratulations, you're a saint. Look at the person next to you and say, you're a saint. <laughs> they may not look like it, you may not think they are, but surprise, they are. I mean, we're, we used to think of like people named Patrick or Francis of Assisi or maybe Mother Teresa. My wife's a saint, I'm just letting you know. Um, but then today is, um, is one that maybe people aren't as familiar with, and it's called All Souls Day. Um, it's also known as Dia de los Muertos, and it's also known as uh, the Day of the Faithful Departed. And so this is the moment of the day that we intentionally pause and remember those who have gone before us in the faith. Um, for me, it's, it's really poignant because I lost my last grandparent this year. Um, I lost my grandmother, Dorothy. And so today, that's really, really kind of close to the emotions. <laughs> Um, and remembering those who have gone before us in the faith. So it's a day that, as we approach the table, as one of the beloved, we, we remember uh, those who have gone before us. But it's not just this, it's not this mental ascent thing. We believe as Christians that there are certain times and places where we enter into the life of, of the whole church, that which is here on earth and that which is in heaven. You know, I'm well aware of the fact that my grandmother is in fact living. She's just not living on this planet. And as we approach the table, you know, there's a table in heaven, we're told, that one day we'll all gather around that table. And so as we approach this moment, not only do we think of those who have come before us, but we celebrate the fact that we're going there to meet not only with them, but with our Savior. And that this is indeed uh, a sign, a symbol um, that points us to, not to bread and wine, but to the fact that there is a hope, that there is a resurrection, that those who went before us in the faith who have died did not die in vain. And that's something that we celebrate. Yes, we come humbly to this table, but there's a reason why we call it the Eucharist, the great thanksgiving, because we recall what Christ did for us through the breaking of the bread and the wine. Right. Can I also ask you to describe your roping just a little bit here, and what's the significance of that? Oh, sure. So, um, uh, how many of you, when, uh, when it's Advent, do you know what colors typically get used? I think I've heard it. Yeah, purple. Uh, so you have to speak loud because it's, it's very bright up here. Uh, <laughs> so again, just in, in terms of keeping with the rhythm of the church, we recognize that there's certain times and certain seasons of the year that we, will, that we uh, observe, and sometimes we wear different colors. Uh, 
to recognize that fact. So uh, for all for all hells, even all saints, all souls, um, the option is uh, is white because white is a, a celebratory color. And so we again we celebrate the fact that we have received Christ, and we celebrate the fact that there is hope, that there is a resurrection that is coming. And in in the old days uh, of uh, pre-literate society, this was one of the ways that that the people who were coming to church would know what what season it was and what was being celebrated or observed that day. Um, so it, it's not because I particularly, it's warm under here, guys. I'm just letting you know it's warm under here. But it's an outward sign that I can point to today and say, this is a festive day. This is a day to rejoice. It's not a day to, you know, be, be sad and mournful. Again, bringing back to memory of those people maybe who have, who have passed away. But it's also a, a time and a season to celebrate. And uh, particularly as we are now, what, just under eight weeks away from, from Christmas, and we'll pull these out again. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we celebrate today, we celebrate these last few days. All right. So thank you, Bishop, thank you for leading us this morning as we celebrate and we remember today. Yeah. So we actually want to, we want to start with bringing our, our hearts and minds together. Um, I think that uh, the old adage that confession is good for the soul holds very true. So I think we have a uh, corporate confession that we're going to uh, put up on the, on the screen there. That's close. There we go. Um, so this is, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I don't typically do this, but I, I kind of have this sense to do this this morning. Um, I would invite you to take a, a posture of confession, whatever that may look like to you. If it's standing, if it's kneeling, if you just want to be seated, that's fine. Uh, different traditions, and that's one of the things I was going to mention is, you know, I love being at the school because we have the ability just to be the body of Christ. Yes, it was founded by Free Methodists, but we're just the body of Christ here. Um, you know, Pastor Dustin represents one side, I represent another, and we represent whatever it is. But we're all just Christians, we're all just followers of Christ. So this morning, I would invite you to, to take up a, a posture of, of confession this morning. And you can fold your thoughts, those things that you need to confess before the Lord and just speaking in your heart and your mind.
Bible. We forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Let's say this together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die, to rise from the dead, and to ascend for the glorious resurrection. We come to this table this morning and we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to join our voices with the saints, as we just mentioned before. On the night that the Lord Jesus Christ handed himself over to suffering and death, he took bread, he took common elements, and he gave thanks to the Lord. And we give you thanks, Father. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body. Take it here. It is given for you. And after the meal was over, he took a cup. A common cup. And he too gave thanks for it. And give you thanks for it for today. God, we give you thanks for the provision. Lord, we give you thanks for those things that we don't even know we're coming yet. We thank you in advance for that work. And blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you, not one of you, not two of you, but all of you. Think about the people who were gathered around the table that night with Jesus. He had revolutionaries, he had tax collectors, he had fishermen, he had students, he had professors, he had staff. All were welcome at the table. So together, let us proclaim this mystery of our faith. Let's say it together. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. God, we celebrate the memorial of our redemption in Christ, and so we offer you these gifts. Father, we ask that you would sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for us the body and blood of your Son. God, that which brings life everlasting. God, we ask that you would sanctify us also. Father, as we have confessed, as we have recognized uh, that we are the, the children of God, we ask that you would sanctify us and use us for your service. All this we ask through your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, by him, in him, with him, through him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And so now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us boldly declare this. Declare this. Let us proclaim <clears throat> the family prayer together. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God. It's a gift of God, for the people of God, for the children of God, for those who are young in the faith, for those who are old in the faith. This is the gift, the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. And invite uh, those who are helping to serve forward. It's our great pleasure and honor to serve you. And give us just a minute, and we'll be set free.
turn to the angels of Paul this morning. Thank you. 
here, so I'm going to dismiss. And then uh, if you'd like to linger, you're welcome to linger. And we'd ask that those who believe will be quietly. Even now, thank you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and give you some